Hi everyone, welcome to the second episode of our free course, Blender Story from Zero to Andy's Room, where you will learn how to model this entire room in the software. What are you waiting for? Let's get it started. In this episode, we'll get to know the transform tools in Blender. There are three main transform tools in Blender, Move, Rotate, and Scale. Each has its own transformation gizmo that allows you to move, rotate, or scale objects along the X, Y, and Z axis. Remember, the navigation methods we briefly covered in the last episode and the transform tools we we'll learned today are some of the most frequently used features in Blender. Working in 3D software without these tools is nearly impossible, at least until today. So make sure to practice them well so they become second nature because you'll use them all the time. In Blender, as in other software, there are often multiple ways to do the same thing. But in this course, I want to show all the methods. For beginners, seeing all the available methods can be confusing. So I will introduce tools and methods as needed so you can learn them practically and effectively. Don't accept a tool-centric approach in this course. Learning all the tool features comes later when your mind is more ready to accept the details. For now, we'll proceed and solve any issues as they come up. All right, let's get familiar with the three ways to transform items in Blender so that in the next episode, we can easily create our first 3D model. I suggest pausing the video after each method to practice. Remember, there is no better or worse method here, just the one you are most comfortable with. To transform, you need to get familiar with two new regions in the user interface. The first region is the toolbar, located here. You can see the move, rotate, and a scale tool included in the toolbar. Another region is this part of the software called properties. For transform, we deal with the object properties tab and the transform panel, which is selected by default when you open the software. Here you can see three options, location, rotation, and scale, each with three axes that can be used to transform the object. Remember, these three items are linked to the three tools in the toolbar. This means when we use these tools in the toolbar, the values in these fields change accordingly. For a bit of fun, let's first select this cube and delete it by pressing the delete key. Now press shift plus A to open the add menu and don't worry about this menu for now. To quickly introduce it, you can add various objects that Blender offers to your scene using this menu. You'll get to know it better later. Just follow along. Move your mouse over the mesh option and click on monkey. Now things are getting interesting. Okay, let's look at the first method of using the transform tools through the toolbar. The hotkey for the toolbar is T, which toggles it between height and unhide. You can also close it by dragging the edge to the left and reopen it by clicking on this small arrow. Okay, let's start with the move tool. By default, the select box tool is active which allows you to select items in the scene. You can select items with a left click or drag to select multiple objects. But once you click on the move tool, you can select and move items. The move, rotate and scale tools are also selection tools. You could call them select and move, select and rotate and select and scale. But for simplicity, we just call them by their main function. The first thing you need to do is make sure the item you want to transform is selected. So I come here and select the monkey object. And now when I click on the move tool, you can see the transform gizmo on the object. If I click anywhere in the empty part of the scene, you'll notice that even though the move tool is active, the transform gizmo doesn't appear because the object isn't selected. So I select my object and you'll see it highlighted in orange, indicating that it's selected. And now by holding down the left click on any axis and dragging the mouse, you can move the object along that axis. In the transform properties section, you can also see that as you move the object, the value for that axis changes, showing how much the object has been moved along that axis. It's that simple. If you move the mouse over the small circle in the center and click and drag, you can move the object freely along all axes simultaneously. Although this method is less common, 
as we usually want to move objects along a specific axis. Using the other two tools is just as simple. This time I'm selecting the rotate tool. As you can see, the rotation gizmo appears with its specific controls. You can easily rotate your object around a chosen axis by clicking and dragging on that axis. If you move your mouse away from any axis, a faint circle will appear in the center, allowing you to freely rotate the object around all axes simultaneously. As I mentioned with the move tool, this type of rotation is not very common and is rarely used. The last tool is scale. The scale gizmo has its own specific controls, like the other tools. You can click and drag on the desired axis to adjust the object's scale along that axis. However, with the scale, the central circle is actually very useful, unlike with move and rotate. It allows you to scale your object uniformly, so its shape stay consistent. Therefore, in scaling, all the axes are important. So, you've already learned the second method for using transform tools, right? That is, using object properties. You can easily perform transformations on the selected object by typing the desired number into any of these fields. Note that the default unit for move is meters, indicated by this small m next to the field. For example, when you type 2 into the z-axis field and press enter, it moves the object 2 meter up. It's worth noting that you can change the unit in Blender, but we'll cover that later. You can also click and drag on any of these fields to change the values. If you want to adjust all fields simultaneously, you can click and hold the mouse on one of the fields, drag downward to make all fields editable at once, and then type in your desired number. Regarding rotation and scale, there is no need for further explanation as they work similarly. Just type your desired number into the appropriate fields. Don't worry about the mode in this section. You won't need to change it unless you're learning rigging in Blender. So if you're not familiar with rigging, just forget about it. Now, there's another tool in the toolbar called Transform. When you select it, all the gizmos become available simultaneously, so you don't have to go back and forth to select each tool individually. Now, let's move on to the third method, which is a bit hidden, but can make you look really professional and cool. I suggest you pause the video here, practice what you've learned so far, and then come back to check out the third method. I won't play any background music for you, like last episode, because I'm sure you've grasped it by now, and it's not needed. Okay, the third method involves using hotkeys for the transform tools. S for scale, R for rotate, and G for goof. Um, sorry, I, I meant uh, move. All right, uh, you can think of it as grab, okay? G for grab. This way it will be easier to remember. Now, let's see how to use these hotkeys. We'll just start with rotate. The way to use these hotkeys is a bit tricky, so Pay close attention, please. First, make sure to select the object you want to work with. It's crucial to check the position of your mouse in the scene before pressing the hotkey. For example, if I place my mouse over the object here and then press the R key, you'll see that the object starts rotating around all axes simultaneously as I move the mouse. When using rotation, it's better to move your mouse in a circular motion around the gizmo rather than moving it up, down, left, or right, like this. Now, I'll right-click to cancel the operation and return the object to its previous state. This time, I'll move the mouse away from the object to the right side of the viewport and then press the R key. Now you'll see that I need to move the mouse much further to rotate the object. This makes it a bit more challenging. Again, I'll right-click to cancel the operation, so be sure to check the position of your mouse before pressing the hotkey. I move my mouse back to this area and press R to activate rotation again. Now we need to specify which axis we want to rotate around. There are two ways to do this, okay? One, press the corresponding axis key on your keyboard. For example, if I want to rotate the monkey's head around the Z axis, 
I use the gizmo at the top of the scene to see which axis I'm selecting. So I press, for example, the Z key on the keyboard and you'll see that the Z axis is highlighted in blue. And now, as I move the mouse, I can rotate the monkey's head around the Z axis, okay? Note that at this stage, you can switch between axes by typing different axis keys. For instance, if I select the Z axis and realize I made a mistake, I can simply press the X key to rotate around the X axis instead. Now, I'll press the Z key again to select the Z axis and move the mouse to rotate as desired. At the last stage, left click to apply the rotation. It's that simple. You did it! Now, I'll press Ctrl Z to undo the operation, just like in other softwares. Every time you press Ctrl Z, you can undo the last action you performed. For redo, you can add shift. So it's Ctrl plus shift plus Z. This isn't something we need a separate video for, as I assume everyone knows this. If you didn't, now you do. Okay, let's continue. So I'll press the R key. This time, for example, I press the Y key to select the Y axis. And now, instead of moving the mouse, I can type the desired number for rotation. Isn't that cool? For example, I'll type 20 and press enter. You'll see that the monkey's head rotates 20 degrees around the Y axis. Now, I'll press Ctrl Z again. And let's move on to the second method for selecting the axis. There is another way to select the axis. Press R. Hold down the middle mouse button and move the mouse towards the desired axis. Align the white line with the axis you want, then release the middle mouse button. Make sure to focus on the white line and not be muzzled by the black line. So I'll press R, then hold down the middle mouse button, align the white line with the Y axis and release the middle mouse button. The axis is now set and I can type the number I want and press enter. Make sure to keep in mind that to work comfortably with these tools, you really need to practice them yourself right now. I recommend that you try to figure out how the scale and move tools work before I explain them. The main difference lies in selecting the hotkey for each transform tool. Now, let's test the move tool. First, I'll position the mouse here, for example, then press the G key. To select the X axis, hold down the middle mouse button, and align the white line with the x-axis. Then I'll type 5. Note that as you type the number, you can see it in the tool setting region at the top. Here, I mean. And you can also delete the number you typed by pressing backspace and enter a new one. For instance, I'll type 3.5 this time and then press enter. This method applies to all transform tools. Now let's try scale. Press S to activate the scale tool and without selecting any axis, just move the mouse. If you continue to move the mouse to the left, you'll see it exits the scene and re-enters from the right, allowing you to keep scaling as much as you want. Pretty cool, right? If you want, we can select an axis, though it might not seem logical in this case. Okay, that's it for this part and remember, Learning these tools is very important and you'll use them the most in your projects along with navigating the scene. Make sure to practice these tools because in the future, we'll use them for moving object components. Don't know what components are? No problem. We'll cover that in later sections. In the next part, we'll dive into exciting part and do our first 3D modeling so we can ease the stress of Pixar and Disney. Until next time, Goodbye.